Hi, I'm Bob Dodge with Artemis Gallery. I started Artemis Gallery about, oh gosh, 23, 24 years ago. And over that time, one area of collecting that I really enjoy is ancient glass. And over the years, I have seen some of the most incredible pieces of ancient Roman glass, ancient Greek glass, uh, Phoenician. I mean, it's just some of the most amazing material. You've got different sizes, shapes, functions, colors of glass, everything that you can think about, and it's reasonably affordable. Um, I will admit to one thing, ancient glass scares the living daylights out of me. Uh, I can handle pottery and have no qualms about, you know, touching it, handling it, doing whatever. Ancient glass, I get a little bit nervous because it's really fragile. But one of the things I wanna talk about today is fake ancient glass. And ooh, there's that awful word that uh, we all hate in this industry, fakes. And like every other aspect of the industry, where there is money to be made making fakes, people have come up with ways of making fake ancient glass. So I'm gonna go over a couple of the things that I look for when I'm looking at ancient glass. And maybe as a collector, um, if you see ancient glass that looks great, maybe too good to be true, take a look at it with a very discerning eye and see if what you're really looking at is right. So in front of me, I've got authentic ancient glass. I've got Roman, I've got Islamic, uh, several different shapes. I've got a piece that I'll talk about later that it is authentic. And I've got some uh, ancient-esque glass in front of me. These four pieces, all reproductions and when they came in they look really convincing and um, let me tell you about the first time I saw a piece of ancient glass that didn't turn out to be ancient I bought it paid a nice little sum for it thought it was the most beautiful thing ever it had gorgeous iridescence like this thing and back in those days um, I was a newbie and I didn't trust my eyes so I took it to a dealer and he said, you know what, there's something strange about that. I, you know, it looks right, but there's something strange. So I went home and I started looking at the iridescence. And iridescence is one of those key areas that we look at with ancient glass that helps prove to us that it's ancient. So with this particular piece of glass, I actually was able to start peeling the iridescence off and it was actually chemically applied rubber and after I was done I had a very crystal clear piece of glass no iridescence and uh, my $500 investment turned out to be worth about five bucks so uh, in this case so let's let's look at some of the signs that we look at um, iridescence okay if you've ever handled ancient glass and again I get a little bit nervous with ancient glass Iridescence on ancient glass is a process that happens over time, and it's basically a process of decay. The glass starts to decay in layers, like an onion, and when you hold ancient glass, this layer of iridescence comes off in sheets and flakes, and as much as you don't want it to come off, you can't help it from coming off onto your fingers. And if you've got any moisture on your fingers, it can come off in big chunks. So here is a piece of ancient glass with authentic iridescence. You can see it's starting to come off on my fingers. It's absolutely authentic. So what happens with ancient glass or glass that's not ancient? And what does the patina look like? So in this case, uh, what would be a fairly important piece of glass, probably worth three or $4,000, um, the iridescence doesn't come off, doesn't flake, uh, has a strange hue to it. Uh, this one is just iridescent and uh, looks like the rainbow. This has kind of a reddish, pinkish tone, and it's kind of one color. It doesn't come off, it doesn't flake off on my hands, there's nothing here. And if you scratch it a little bit, nothing comes off. But if you were to take something and polish that a little bit, you would end up with something that is crystal clear and obviously chemically applied. So here's a piece of glass, beautiful iridescence. It's just not authentic iridescence. So another trick that the fakers have come up with. Now, 
Here's a bottle. Wonderful rainbow iridescence. Look at all the beautiful colors on that. The problem with this, if you look really, really closely, all of these flakes of iridescence are small. They're, they're little pieces of iridescence. And what these darn fakers have done, they'll take a real piece, or actually they take shards where there's great iridescence, and they'll take the iridescence off and they'll put it in front of them, and they'll take glue, and they'll glue over the brand new bottle, and then they'll roll this or, or glue that iridescence on. And it looks like a million tiny little individual pieces of iridescence. And that's actually what we've got here. We've got a piece of brand new glass where somebody has taken super glue, slathered over the entire thing, and then put authentic iridescence over the top. That fools so many people. But again, it, it's stuck to the surface. It doesn't come off. It doesn't look like this type of sheet iridescence. It just doesn't look right. So um, that's something to look at. Look at the iridescence. If it's little tiny pieces of iridescence, that's a major red flag that something is going on. Um, another piece that looked very convincing when it came in, right color, little bit of subtle iridescence. But with my fingernail, I was able to scratch the surface and see that it was just brand new, recently made, uh, highly uh, translucent glass, and just not what glass is supposed to look like. So um, what would have been an important piece of glass with a wonderful grapevine pattern turns out to be a worthless uh, tourist fake, probably sold to a tourist in Israel. Finally, we look at the color of glass. Now here's a beautiful blue glass, and if you're a collector of glass, you know that blue is one of the most desirable colors, and the cobalt blue really is a color that we love to see. But there's something about the, the shade of this blue that I didn't like. There was something about the iridescence that I didn't like. And then something that always bugs me. When you buy a piece of ancient glass, if it's got heavy dirt deposits, there's, there should be a red flag that goes off that says, hey, something is going on here. People who find and sell ancient glass, um, the first thing they want to do is clean it. You want a piece of Roman glass that is beautiful and clean and perfect. You don't want something that is just covered in mud. So if you see something that's covered in mud, something's going on. Uh, mud does come off. The dirt does come off. So. One other example, here is a piece, ancient glass, but it is so slathered in mud, I knew something was going on. So all of this mud uh, told me we've got a problem. So we've got a marvelous big uh, ancient glass bowl, um, authentic iridescence that does flake off, but just heavy areas of mud. And after I cleaned it a little bit, it became very clear what was going on. We've got a vessel that was repaired I would call it kind of a field repair, and then they took Elmer's glue or super glue and just glued mud all over the surface of this thing. So what was once an incredible uh, glass bowl is now still an attractive, authentic piece, but with lots of hidden repairs. So when you're buying glass, like I've talked about in other series, use your senses, use your eyesight, your, your feel, just look for any sign that the thing isn't right. And I think as I've uh, said in a video before, look at a piece and make it prove to you that it's uh, not wrong. So go in with the, the assumption, this is wrong. So use the senses to make it prove that it is right. In this case, right, but heavily restored. So with ancient glass, do your homework. Don't buy stuff like this. With this one, I'm so convinced it's a fake, I'm willing to do this. Bob Dodge, Artemis Gallery, thanks so much.